Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. This is another video in the series of videos I'm doing on Topaz Labs software, specifically Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, Gigapixel AI, and Photo AI. I've already done five videos in the series and I'll have all those videos in a playlist listed in the description of this video. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the best way to use Topaz Labs Sharpen AI as a standalone application. As you can see, I have it open. I'm going to browse images. And you can see on my desktop, I have a DNG image. And you can see the name of the DNG image has this underscore DSC 4488. Then it has dash denoise AI dash clear. That's because I recommend that you do not sharpen your images early in your workflow. Sharpen later in your workflow. As a matter of fact, one of the first things you should, should do is remove noise from the image. So as you can see, this specific file was sent through Denoise AI first. Happened to use the clear AI model on this specific image to remove the noise. Uh, then uh, I exported or I saved it out of Denoise. I used Denoise AI as a standalone app and I saved it from Denoise AI as a DNG. It was originally a Nikon RAW file. And these apps can read RAW files. So I could open a Nikon RAW file or any type of RAW file for that matter up into Sharpen AI directly. But I recommend you don't because you should remove noise first before you sharpen it. That way the apps work better. They just work more effectively. Specifically Denoise AI, it more effectively removes noise before you sharpen the image. When you sharpen the image, you're enhancing the noise and you're making it more difficult to be removed. So I took a RAW file, Nikon RAW file. I ran it through Denoise AI, ended up with this DNG file. I wanted to keep it raw, so I saved it as a DNG file. I'm going to open it up into Sharpen AI. Now it really hasn't been processed otherwise, and you can see it's of a tiger. And if you just glance here before it updates, you can see it's kind of blurry. Um, I was shooting through thick plexiglass and the tiger was swimming toward me. I had a very long lens. It was a 200 to 500 lens, but I didn't have it zoomed out all the way. It was only like around 200 memory serves, 277 millimeters. So um, it was rather awkward to hold and I really didn't nail focus. Now you could see that um, if you look over at the right at the Sharpen AA model, I have it set to auto. And it shows out of focus, very noisy, which is unusual because I already removed the noise. And I've mentioned in previous videos on Sharpen AI that I do not like to use this auto method, meaning it's going to automatically pick the model for sharpening because in my experience, it rarely picks the best model. There's other models that will be better than this. And obviously I already moved the noise so it's not very noisy. So I'm not sure why it picked this one. But if I do a before after just by clicking right on the image and holding in the left mouse button, there's before, there's after, there's before, there's after. And you can see there's a nominal improvement on the image. So what I'm going to do is instead, I'm going to look at all of the uh, sharpened models at one time. And to do that, I'm going to at least see four of them at one time by clicking on comparison view right here. And now you could see um, and I can move this navigator window around to see uh, best. Now I'm going to put it right on the tiger's face because that's what's most important. You can see in the top left-hand corner I have the standard model. And I have mentioned many times in these videos I like to compare things as equally as possible to one another. Meaning uh, in this case I want to make sure that model parameters are set to auto as well. So the standard model parameter is set to auto. And that, that means for standard, these three sliders will be um, adjusted as Denoise, or I'm sorry, as Sharpen AI thinks they should be adjusted. Also, it shows the lens blur, blur type over the motion blur, blur type. Now to the right of that, I have motion blur, very blurry. That is on auto. And you can look at that one, see what that does. In the lower left-hand corner, I have out of focus, very blurry. That is on auto, so we're good to go there. And then in the lower right-hand corner, I have out-of-focus normal. And that is on um, 
auto as well. So we're comparing apples to apples, oranges to oranges. We're looking at these four different sharpened models, all on auto. Looking at them, the worst one is the lower right-hand corner one, out of focus normal. So what I do is I determine which one is worst. It's this. Then I'll swap it out with a different one, one that isn't being shown already. In this case, I'm going to go to out of focus, very blurry, because that one, oh no, it is shown in the lower left-hand corner. So I'm going to go with too soft, very blurry, because that one isn't shown. So I'll click on that one, let it render, and see what that looks like. And there's before and there's after. And that one is a nominal improvement. Now, just looking at them at first, um, the top two look very sharp. They, as a matter of fact, look too sharp. They're over sharpened. The lower left-hand corner one is kind of odd. It seems to have some parts that are over sharpened, like the cheeks of the tiger. But parts of the eyes don't seem like they're sharp enough. So this is kind of a dilemma, like which way should you go? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, now I could keep swapping out too, I should, I'm getting ahead of myself. This uh, too soft, very blurry is still the worst one. I could still try different ones like too soft normal or just try other ones that aren't shown. And all you got to do is make sure you have the one you want to swap out as the active sharpened model by clicking on it and then just going up here on the right and clicking on the one you want to swap it out with. Let's try standard motion blur. Now that one we can't put on auto because auto would, is lens blur, but you can see that one looks overly sharp too. So as I was saying, we have a dilemma here because this lower left-hand one looks okay a little bit, but the eyes aren't sharp enough. The cheeks are too sharp. Uh, the top two are both overly too sharp. So what I tend to do is take one of the ones that are overly too sharp. Let's too sharp. Let's take motion blur very blurry and click on it. So that's active. Then what I'll do is I'll go to single view. So we're seeing it all by itself. We have to wait for it to update and render so we could see it. Okay, because now it's pretty obvious, right? It's, it's just too sharp. There's before and there's after. So it's on auto. What I'll do is I'll just pull it off auto. Uh, there's no noise because I already got rid of the noise into noise AI. So I'll take that right down. And then remove blur when it was on auto was at 68. So let's just have it around, get it around half, like around 34. Let it render and see what that looks like. All right. And that looks a little bit too sharp as well. So again, I'm going to come in and what I'll do is I'll have it again. Half of 34 is 17. So I'll get it around 17. And let that render. And that one, um, that one looks actually pretty decent. That one looks pretty decent. Now you could click right on it. I've been doing this in all of these videos to get it before after by clicking right on the image. Before, after, before, after. Instead of that, what you could do is you could go up here and click on this original. Just click and hold in. There's before, after. It's the same as clicking on the image itself. Okay. So... Looking at it at 17, the eyes look okay, the nose looks good, but it's still kind of too sharp in the ear area here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a mask, and I'm going to selectively sharpen this uh, image where I want it sharpened. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this on, and it's going to find the subject automatically. In this case, it will find the head. That's all that's showing, really, the head of the tiger. Now, wherever is white on the mask, that is where the sharpening is being applied. And wherever is black, there's no sharpening at all being applied there. And I don't need any sharpening done to the water. We don't want the water sharp for the water to be kind of blurry and not distinguishable. We want to see the, the, the tiger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refine the mask, though. What I'm going to do here is something, and you can see the mask is right there, um, showing what's being sharpened. So I'm going to do something that I haven't done in previous videos is this time I'm going to change the opacity of the mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract from the mask, but I don't want to subtract all the sharpening from like the ears and the sides of the face. I just want to subtract most of the sharpening. So I'm going to turn the opacity down to like 20. Now, I'm not going to worry about edge aware because we're not 
adding any sharpening to the edge where we're removing it. So I'm just going to come in. I could get a bigger brush too, something like this. And I'll come in and I'll just subtract some of that sharpening that I had over there. Now it's hard to tell. It doesn't really give you a lighter kind of red uh, look to it. So what you could do is you could just update it and take a look at what it looks like. And it looks actually pretty decent. I probably could have did more at the top of the uh, tiger's head and maybe a little more over here. And if you look at the mask carefully, you'll see how parts of the white are now gray. And that's because I took away some of the sharpening, but I didn't take away all of the sharpening. So I'm going to refine this again. I'm going to stay with that subtract um, brush. And I am going to keep opacity at maybe around, just turn it up just a little bit. And I'm going to come up it here and remove it from up in here a little bit. Remove a little more around the cheeks over there. And get a smaller brush. I'm come in here. A little more around the cheeks there. And get a smaller brush and come in here. Kind of look kind of funky a little bit. Do that. And then we'll turn off the overlay. Take a look. And that actually looks pretty good. There's before. And there's after. There's before. And there's after. Much, much better. And we'll click update. All right, that's something I haven't shown before, how to use the mask refine tools to partially remove some of the sharpening from an area. You, of course, could add to it and partially add sharpening to an area as well if you wanted to do that. Now, right now, I, I'm kind of happy with it, so I'm ready to save the image. Now, we are using Sharpen AI as a standalone app, so we're just going to click on save, and it's going to give us the option of the image format we want to save it as. You have two different spellings of JPEG, so JPG or JPEG, two different spellings of TIFF, so those two file types, or you could do a PNG or a DNG. Now, I like to keep my raw format throughout my workflow because my next step would be to send this into an editor. Maybe I'll send it into Photoshop or something like that and, and process the image properly. Then what I'll do is I'll keep it raw, so I'll do DNG, and I'll save it as that. And you can see where it's saving up here. And it's saved. Now it overwrote what I did. Oh no, it didn't. It added. I'm sorry. It has right here is the new one. Right here, here is the former one. So if I now double click on this, it will open up because I have my system set up to open up raw files by default in Photoshop. So it'll open this up in Photoshop. And then I could continue my editing here. Now you can see where it opens up because it is a raw file in Camera Raw. It is now sharp. We'll just uh, oh, edit it from here. What I'll probably do is take exposure down a little bit, add a little bit of contrast, bring in those highlights a little more, open up those shadows just a touch. Get a white and black point, hold in the Option key or Alt key on my computer and come in and do that and just add a little vibrance. And there, I'm done. So there's my edited raw file like that. I could click open and open it up into Photoshop proper if I wanted to do something here. So that's how you go about using Topaz Labs Sharpen AI as a standalone app. The important thing I want you to take away from this video is don't do Sharpen AI early in your workflow. Do it later in your workflow. You definitely want to remove noise first. So if you're using these apps as standalone apps, take your raw file before you do anything to it and send it to Denoise AI. Get rid of the noise. At that point, if you want, you could open it up into an application like Camera Raw and do some editing on it, some tone and color editing, if you want. Avoid doing any sharpening if you plan to send it to Sharpen AI, because as you saw, Sharpen AI could very easily over sharpen the image. So don't do any sharpening at that point. Just do your tone editing. In my case, I didn't do that. I just sent it to Denoise AI, remove noise, then I sent it into Sharpen AI to sharpen it. Then I sent it into Camera Raw to do editing on it. it. Those, you know, doesn't really matter what order you do those last two things. Just make sure you remove noise early in your workflow, preferably first. Do that first, then uh, later on in your workflow, sharpen it like I did here. 
Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.